Theology. So hello there and welcome to this class. So today in this class I want us to study about respiration. So what is respiration? So simply, respiration this is the process whereby food is chemically broken down in the body to release energy. So in the definition for respiration, never say that food is only broken down. So you should be specific. Food is chemically broken down in the body in order to release energy. Because we see that during digestion, food is also chemically and mechanically broken down. That is not respiration. And that's why for respiration, you must be specific and say that this is the process whereby food is chemically broken down in the body to release energy. So this energy that is being released uh, during respiration, it is used to carry out different uh, characteristic of living things. Let's say, for example, growth and development, movement and locomotion. For example, we have nutrition. For example, we have irritability, etc., etc. So you see that respiration occurs all the time, and if stopped, cellular activities will be disrupted in the body due to lack of energy. So all cells in the body require energy in order to, to be able to perform their specific function. So if respiration stops indefinitely, so most of the cellular activities in the body will be disrupted because there won't be any energy to facilitate any of the physiological and the physical processes that the cells do carry out. So this may also result in death in severe conditions. So for example, you see that if the brain cells are going to lack energy uh, needed for respiration, for a short period of time, they'll start to die slowly by slowly. So the brain cells are going to die. Not only the brain cells, but all the cells of the body. So if they don't get enough energy to carry out their specific processes, they are going to die. This is because also cells require energy for different uh, characteristics, like for example, obtaining nutrients, um, reproduction in order to make more cells, apart from that irritability in order to detect that this is a harmful bacteria, this is an essential bacteria. So they also require to get the energy from the process of respiration in order to carry out their different uh, processes of the body. So you see that many living, uh, many living things also, um, like for example now the full body of the organism. So the full body of the organism uh, gets energy from the cell. So the cell gets energy from the mitochondrion. So the mitochondrion we'll see in the, just in the upcoming. So you'll see that the mitochondrion is the main organelle which produces energy for the cells. So uh, we see that as much as energy will be produced by the mitochondrion, the energy to be used for movement, locomotion, everything. So as much as the energy will be produced by the mitochondrion, so you see that most energy, however, is lost also during uh, or rather it is lost as heat so most of the energy is lost as heat that's why after you are after someone has undertaken a very much strenuous exercise they really feel a rise in temperature so there is always a rise in temperature on their body so this rise in temperature is brought as a result of most of the energy being lost uh, in the process of respiration producing heat so most of the energy is lost uh, is lost as heat so you see that also this heat that is being lost in the process of respiration, it is mainly essential in human beings because this heat in human beings, it is used to keep the body warm or rather it is used to help in maintaining a constant body temperature. So that's the main function of this heat lost during respiration. Yes, the heat is being lost, but the bodies of the human beings use also this heat in order to maintain the body temperatures back to normal and that is at 37 degrees Celsius. So apart from now the introduction of respiration, let's uh, look at the first subtopic, which is tissue respiration. So simply, what is tissue respiration? So in tissue respiration, you see that this is basically the respiration which takes place inside the cells in all tissues. So remember, for the hierarchy of the living uh, things or living cells in the human, or rather in all living things, we see that we begin from a cell. So you say that a cell is a basic unit of any living organism. So many cells make up a tissue. So many cells brought together to perform a specific function, they make up a tissue. And that's why for the tissue respiration, we have said that this is the respiration taking place inside the cells found in, inside the cells whereby these cells are found in the tissue. So the main respiratory organelle in every cell is the mitochondrion. So mitochondrion is a very 
important organelle whereby it is found in all living cells. So all living cells have mitochondrion, whereby the function of this mitochondrion is to provide energy for the cell. So after the cell has received the energy, so the energy will be again taken to all the cells of the body, whereby these cells of the body will now give the organism energy. The organism to move my hand, these are very many cells uh, having mitochondrion, whereby the mitochondrions are producing energy for me to move this hand, for me to walk, for me to do this and that. So every living cell requires energy. And that's why every living cell has a mitochondrion for facilitating or producing that energy which is being required for daily activities. So we see that most of the organisms require, require oxygen for respiration to take place. So we didn't say all organisms require oxygen, no. We say that most organisms require oxygen for respiration to take place because we'll see that some organisms, they don't require oxygen. In fact, if oxygen is available, some of the cells are, are going to die. So it is not all cells that require oxygen for respiration. Some cells do not require oxygen. Cells, bacteria, viruses, some of them, they, they don't require oxygen. If oxygen is made available, they are going to die. For example, we are going to look at now the obligate and the facultative anaerobes. So we are going to differentiate between this. So some organisms, if oxygen is made available, they are going to die. Some organisms, if oxygen is available or if oxygen is now not available, they are going to die. So we are going to look at them. So as you can see, this is the diagram of the mitochondrion. So this is the organelle which mainly produces energy for the cell. So it's a mitochondrion and it's basically sausage shaped. So for this mitochondrion, we see that we have the two outer layers. So the first layer, we have the outer layer to the outside and then we have the inner layer to the inside. So the inner layer, take note that it, is, it has uh, different projections. So these projections, they are referred to as cristae. So you can see those projections in the inner, inner membrane. So they are referred to as cristae. So we'll see that the function of the cristae is mainly to provide a large surface area for the attachment of the respiratory enzymes for the process of respiration. Because if the cristae could have been just a straight line that is curved like that, it is only limited amount of respiratory enzymes could attach themselves to the mitochondrion in order to provide energy. But now since there are very many projections, they are very... Yeah, they are highly folded. So they are highly folded in order to provide a large surface area for the attachment of the respiratory enzyme in order to facilitate maximum respiration. So apart from that, we have space between membranes and then we have the matrix. So the matrix also contains different respiratory enzymes for respiration to take place. So this organelle, as we have said, we see that it is rod-shaped and it's an organelle which is mainly found in the cytoplasm of every cell. So if we are talking about one, we are going to mention mitochondrion with O-N. But if we refer to very many, we are going to call it mitochondria. So therefore you should take note that in biology, mainly plural is a very key factor. So if you have been asked, name the organelle. That organelle is mitochondrion with O-N. But if there were two or more organelles of the mitochondrion, you could have say that those are mitochondria. So if we have two or more, they are called mitochondria. If we only have one, they are called mitochondrion ending with O-N. So you see that a mitochondrion has a smooth outer membrane and the inner uh, folded membrane, which is called the cristae. So basically, let's look at the next subtopic. Well, by the next subtopic, let's now look at the adaptations of the mitochondrion to its function. So what are, are now the adaptations of the mitochondrion? Anytime in biology, you'll be asked a question on adaptation. What is the question testing? So if you have been asked a question on adaptation, so the question is testing on what are the main reasons as to why mitochondrion has the said characteristics. So remember, if you have been asked, the difference between characteristic and adaptation, if you have been asked about the characteristic, you only say mitochondrion has cristae. Mitochondrion has the inner membrane and the outer membrane. That is characteristic. You don't give the reason why. But for now the adaptations, adaptations you must give the reason as to why it has that characteristic. Like for example, you can say that the mitochondrion has cristae. That is only a characteristic. 
but to make the characteristic an adaptation, you now give us the reason why it has that crystal. For example, you can say the mitochondrion has a, a matrix containing DNA ribosomes for making the different protein enzymes for the breakdown of the pyruvic acid to carbon dioxide, hydrogen ions, and the electrons. Now you see, that is now an adaptation. Because if we could have only said the matrix contains DNA ribosomes, yeah, only, the matrix, only, uh, the matrix contains DNA ribosomes. That is a characteristic. But we now give the reason why it has the DNA ribosomes. So you say that it has the DNA ribosomes, uh, which are used to break down the pyruvic acid or the pyruvate to carbon dioxide, hydrogen ions, and electrons. So you see, if you give the reason for the characteristic, it becomes an adaptation. If you only say it has this, that is only a characteristic. So the next adaptation will say that it has a double membrane to protect the inner organelles or the inner uh, organelle contents, basically. So it has a double membrane. So you see the outer membrane and the inner membrane. So as much as the inner membrane ha is folded to crystal for, for the attachment of different respiratory enzymes, you see that it also serves to protect the inner contents found in the matrix. So that is the function of the double membrane which comprises of the outer membrane and the inner membrane. So apart from that, we'll say that they are highly vascularized and with compartments to increase a large surface area for the production of energy. So they are highly vascularized to increase the surface area for the production of, enzyme, uh, production of energy. Basically, if you hear mitochondrion, it is energy. If you, are, if you are to give any argument, give all arguments based on production of energy. So apart from that, uh, we talked about crystal. We can still mention it and say that they have finger-like projections which are called crystal for the attachment of different respiratory enzymes for the production of energy. All arguments for mitochondrion base your answers based on energy. So because mitochondrion, the main function is production of energy. So apart from that, you can say that they have a fluid-filled cavity which is called the matrix, which are filled with the different respiratory enzymes for the production of energy. So they have a fluid-filled uh, cavity, that middle cavity which is called the matrix. So that matrix has different respiratory enzymes which are used for the production of energy during the breakdown of the food substrate. So apart from that, we see that we have mainly two types of respiration. So the first type of respiration, we have aerobic respiration. Apart from aerobic respiration, we have now the anaerobic respiration. So these two types of respiration, basically, uh, they comprise of different organisms. So we have different organisms which only undertake aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. So remember, when we began by the definition of respiration, we say that there are organisms which... Uh, undertake respiration when oxygen is made available. So when oxygen is made available, some organisms will undertake respiration. So uh, this aerobic respiration, this is mainly respiration which involves oxygen. So oxygen must be present in this respiration which is called aerobic respiration. So if oxygen is not available, so the organisms are going to undertake an aerobic respiration. Again, I'll repeat. So if oxygen is available, organisms are going to undertake aerobic respiration. If oxygen is not available, organisms are going to undertake an aerobic respiration. So this means that in aerobic respiration, there must be oxygen for respiration to take place. In anaerobic respiration, oxygen should not be present. Uh, for respiration to take place. So oxygen is not required for respiration to take place. That is anaerobic respiration. This also means that in, aer in aerobic respiration, if oxygen is not available, organisms are going to die because oxygen is not available. And also in anaerobic respiration, if oxygen is present, organisms are going to die. That is anaerobic respiration. This means that there are organisms which must use oxygen for respiration. If oxygen is not present, these organisms will die. 
for anaerobic respiration, organisms, they don't use oxygen. If oxygen is made available, oxygen is going to poison these cells and these cells are going to die. Biology.